Hi, this is Pastor Kevin with Journey of Faith Forest Christian Church. I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for logging on today to watch our video podcast as we explore God's Word and apply it to our lives. You know, it's so important for our walks that we spend time each day in God's Word to get to know Him and get to grow in Him. With all of my teachings, I have a sermon handout that is used during the message. It contains scriptures and fill-in-the-blank sections for you to follow along with. You may obtain this handout by logging onto our website that is listed on the screen. Go to our resources section and choose study materials. I hope and pray that God's word will speak to you today and thank you for joining the journey. But I do have two questions for you. Did you bring your Bibles today? Yes. If you do not have a Bible, please raise your hand and we will give you a Bible. And if you do not own a Bible, please accept it as a gift from us to you. But more importantly, did you come expecting great things from a great God today? Yes. Did you come expecting great things from a great God today? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. You know what's so exciting for me is I look out in the crowd and I won't point anybody out. But I look out. I'm really not. I'm not. Um, but I look at people and I see how God has moved and worked in their lives this week. And we have seen the miraculous happen. So thank you, Jesus. I tell you, we should never stop expecting great things from a great God because our God truly is great. And what excites me is the closer we get to him and the more we know about him, the more we get to see of him. So thank you, Jesus, for that. Uh, well, I do want to, um, sorry, uh, told that. Ben, did you start Garage Man? Thank you very much. I apologize if anybody, um, the last couple of weeks we've been having issues with our podcast and stuff. I don't know what's been happening, but they have been recording. So we're praying that this one actually records so we can get it out on uh, iTunes for that. So I apologize for that. But, um, but over the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at some of the miracles in the Bible, and specifically in the Old Testament, and learning how they relate to us. Remember we started with Moses parting the Red Sea, and how really that is a miracle and a message of hope for us. And how God can move, and He does move inside of our lives. And then last week, we looked at how only God can do miracles. Remember, Moses hit the rock when he wasn't supposed to, and water came out. And God said, because you didn't do what I wanted you to do, because you didn't show the people that the power came from me, you will now not be able to go and enter into the promised land with them. And so we always have to remember that only God can do the miracles, and we cannot try to take matters into our own hands, because quite honestly, all we ever do is mess up God's plan in our life. But today we're going to look at a different side of miracles, kind of a less expected and quite honestly, probably a less desired side of the miracles. I read a quote from Albert Einstein and he says, there are two ways to live. You can live as, as if nothing is a miracle. You can live as if everything is a miracle. And see, church, one of the things that I hope we get out of this series is that we understand and realize that quite every, honestly, everything in our life is a miracle. But how many would you agree with me that we like miracles, right? We like the things in our lives that are fun and exciting. And how many would agree with me that we like miracles even more if they happen to do with something that we want or we've been praying for? Now, what I want to challenge you with today, though, the church, is that how many of you would actually agree with me that maybe miracles are even better when we get what we don't want and when we get what we haven't been praying for. Today we're going to look and see that some of God's greatest miracles happen when they are the exact opposite of what we want. And we're going to see through our scripture today that sometimes miracles come from unexpected places involving unexpected people. Now, if you have your Bibles, if you want to open up to Numbers chapter 22, and we're beginning in verse 22, and if you don't have a Bible, we do have that scripture on the handout that I gave you. But while you're getting there, Lord, we just thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you that it is true, the honest word of God. We thank you inside of it includes your promises to us, Lord. Lord, I pray right now we would just release from our minds all the worries, the struggles, the trials, all the things on our calendars that we'll do later on today, Lord. 
Lord, I pray right now we would just sit and be still. That we would focus on your presence. That we would focus on your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, beginning in verse 22 of chapter 22 numbers, it says, Then God's anger was aroused because he went. And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. And he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. Now the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the way and went into the field. So Balaam struck the donkey to turn her back onto the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards, with a wall on this side and a wall on that side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed herself against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. So he struck her again. Then the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn, either to the right hand or to the left. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam. So Balaam's anger was aroused, and he struck the donkey with his staff. Now, I'm going to stop there for a minute. I want to give you a little bit of background as to how we got to chapter, excuse me, to verse 22. And so what happens earlier in, verse, in chapter 22 is that Israel, you know, Israel's been running, wandering, wandering around for a few years. And they finally get to a point where they're kind of coming up to Canaan. And there's a king in Moab, his name is Balak. And he's getting a little nervous because the Israelites are getting close to his country. And Israel kind of has a reputation of defeating anybody that gets in front of them. So he's nervous that they're getting close to his kingdom, and he's afraid that they're going to come and try to conquer him. So he gets this great idea, and he decides that he's going to hire a prophet, you know, because he doesn't want to do battle with him necessarily, but he's going to hire a prophet to come out and, and, and curse the Israelites. And then once they have cursed them and hopefully weakened them and whatnot, then he's thinking he could possibly attack them and win. So the prophet that he goes to hire is Balaam. Now, his, his Balaam, the king's men go to Balaam and, and they say, hey, you know, we'd like you to do this for us. And, and Balaam says, well, you know, I, I need to consult with God because if God says no, then I can't do it. So he consults with God and God says, absolutely not, don't go up. But sometimes our own desires and interests get in our own way, right? So we keep asking God, right? Even though we know God's already said no. But he keeps asking, like, oh, please, please. And so God finally says, go. So what we have here is, is Balaam going basically kind of against the will of God. But he's going now to curse the Israelites. And this isn't part of the message. But what he doesn't understand is that Israel is God's chosen and blessed people. So even if he wanted to, he's not going to be able to curse them anyway. So God decides right now that he's going to stop him. So he sends the angel of the Lord to him. And three times his donkey sees this. And you know, every time we see in the Bible that it describes the angel, what does the angel always say? Do not fear. So we don't know what the angel looks like, but we can imagine that it's fierce and mighty and that it's got a sword. So three times the donkey sees the angel and says, I'm not going anywhere near that thing. The first time it veers off the path, and Balaam gets a little angry and hits the donkey, so the donkey goes back on the path. This time the angel stands in front of him, and there's two walls on the side, so the donkey kind of rubs up against Balaam's foot against the, the wall there, and Balaam gets angry about that. And so the, the donkey keeps moving, and finally he's run out of options. So he just falls down, like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so he falls down, and, the, and Balaam gets so angry, he says, if I had a sword, I would kill you. Now, isn't it interesting that Balaam isn't getting stuff here? Like, he knows that his donkey's not working, right? I don't know a lot about donkeys, but, you know, you always think that donkeys are like the stubborn mules, right? That they don't move, they don't do anything. And I did actually do a little bit of research on donkeys, and apparently they're smarter than people think. And if they ever get afraid of something, they basically will just stop. Like, they're smart enough to know I'm not going to go towards the angel with the sword. I'd rather just stay here. So believe it or not, the, the donkey is actually a pretty smart animal, and it decides to stop. And I'm sure at that moment, Balaam wasn't thinking, wow, this must be God working in my life. There's a miracle happening. I'm sure Balaam is thinking, you know, 
that so-and-so donkey, you know what's funny? Uh, totally side note. Um, I was doing some research, and I can't tell you the number of sermons that use the other word in that, you know? That I won't, but I was shocked. But so I'm sure he's thinking he's, he wants to call his donkey that, 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 that name, right? You son of a gun and this and that. Why aren't you doing what I, what I want? Because in his mind, he's not thinking this could be a miracle. What he's thinking is this donkey is being stupid. Now, if you think about what the definition of a miracle is, I bet we all would probably agree with Balaam. Because the definition of a miracle is a surprising and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws and is considered to be divine. It's a highly improbable or extraordinary event, development, or accomplishment. So as Balaam is sitting there on his donkey and the donkey's doing all this funky stuff, yes, what the donkey was doing was a surprise, but I don't think Balaam thought it was welcome. And yes, it was extraordinary, but I don't think Balaam was necessarily calling it an accomplishment. That's why the title of this sermon is Some Miracles Come from Unexpected Places. Because I know Balaam didn't see it as a miracle. And I know there are things in our own lives that when things start happening, the last thing we would call it is a miracle. Because miracles to us are the good, pleasing things, something that makes us feel good, something that blesses us financially. It's that relationship we've been praying for that we never thought we'd get, and all of a sudden, Mr. Wright or Ms. Mrs. Wright walks into our lives. Amen? Miracles, that job that we needed so desperately and we've been praying so much for that we finally get. But how about this? You know that job that you prayed for and you got? You know the other person that needed it desperately, that was praying for that same job, that didn't get it? The job you called a miracle, do you think they would call not getting the job a miracle? Well, what if not getting that job meant that they another door actually opened for them, and they got a better, more amazing job than the job they really wanted? Do you think at that point, they may start calling that Noah miracle? I'm sure you all are aware of, on a Memorial Day, there was a very tragic car crash in Huntington Beach that killed five high schoolers. I was reading an article this week about it. And there were five kids in that car. But there was supposed to be one more kid with them. You see, there were supposed to be three couples on a triple date. But the boy that didn't get into the car didn't get in because his dad said no. The five had showed up at his house to take them with him. And his dad said he couldn't go because he had to stay home to study for a test. The article in the LA Times had said, Tamir Masalam was supposed to get picked up by the carload of teens for the beach trip. But he stayed behind because his father wanted him to study for a test. Moslem said he was supposed to be the third boy for a three-way double date. In quotes, he said, I was supposed to be with them in the car. That's why there were three girls, he said. They came to my house, but my dad wouldn't let me go out because I was studying for a test. When that carload of kids showed up at their house and he had to say no and watch them drive away, do you think he was thinking just maybe this might be a miracle? When he got news that five of his friends had been tragically killed, do you think maybe he was beginning to think that that no was actually probably one of the greatest miracles he would ever receive in his life? See, church, we all want miracles. We all want the good things to happen in our lives. But we have to understand that not all miracles will make us feel good. Not all miracles will make us feel good. See, not all miracles will seem good to us at the time. But we have to understand and remember that all miracles will seem right with God all of the time. Not all miracles will seem to benefit, benefit us at that moment. But all miracles will ultimately benefit God and His people. 
That means that all miracles will always be used to point to God. But they won't necessarily be used to bless us. And so as we go through the scriptures, hey, church, I want to challenge you that we need to start looking at miracles a little bit differently. Regardless of whether or not we would consider what's happening in our life a miracle, we have to ask the question, does it point to God? And if whatever's happening in our life does point to God, then it is a miracle, regardless of how it makes us feel or what it does to us. See, miracles might not always be good for us. For Balaam at that time, the miracle seemed painful, troubling, and frustrating. We hope you are enjoying this podcast. You can find more information about Journey of Faith. <laughs> I swear I don't pre-record the messages. Like I swear I don't <laughs> That wasn't God speaking, because I don't think he'd sound like me. <laughs> but for Balaam, that miracle seemed troubling and problem. But at the same time, that same miracle prevented pain and curses for Israel. But if we continue in verse 28, it says, Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have abused me, I wish there were a sword on my hand, in my hand, for now I would kill you. So the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey on which you have ridden ever since I became yours to this day? Was I ever disposed to do this to you? And he said, No. What's interesting is this miracle began to unfold in front of Balaam's eyes. He refused to see it because he was so blinded by his frustration and his anger. He had been publicly humiliated by his donkey, and all he ever wanted to do was kill him. He couldn't step back for a moment and say, this is new. The donkey's talking to me, which is kind of odd. <laughs> because he was too set on his own priorities and his own goals in life. See, he was too focused on the, mo the mogul right here that he couldn't see the ones in front of him. And so rather than recognizing and thanking the donkey, he became angry. Sometimes what God will do to us like he did to Babel. God will stand in the road to oppose us if he doesn't like the way we're doing or handling things. See, church, he loves you so much that he tries us, tries to get us to turn around and stop us before we go too far off the path. See, God doesn't abandon us when we disobey Him. He keeps trying to get through to us before we hurt ourselves. And what's so great is that even when we get outside the will of God, He still has a couple stop signs that He will put in front of us to stop us. And He's created those stop, th stop signs Maybe we should do a recording. <laughs> He's created those stop signs through some of the greatest miracles known to man. For example, Jesus, through the greatest miracle, his resurrection, placed a stop sign, his cross, right in the front of the gates of hell. So that if we believe in him and repent and trust in him, we will never have to enter into that. See, sometimes God's stop signs come in the forms of miracles. So when you begin to see stop signs in your life, church, you have to remember that don't miss the signs of a miracle. Don't miss the signs of a miracle. Three times the donkey stopped Balaam from being killed by the angel of the Lord. Three times Balaam beat his donkey for not obeying his commands because he couldn't recognize the signs of the miracle in front of him. But what seems absolutely incredible is that even when the signs of the miracle began to be revealed to him, he refused to recognize them. 
In fact, there were several miracles that happened during this day. Yes, the talking donkey was pretty amazing. But even more amazing, God sent the angel, his angel, to stop him from doing something that was wrong. Church, we can never get so fixed on our own pursuits and goals that we stop seeing what God does and wants to do in our lives. We always thank God for our, un our answered prayers, but church, have you ever stopped and thanked God for your unanswered prayers? Have you ever thanked God for the job you didn't get? Have you ever thanked God for the relationship you never had? Have you ever thanked God for the money you didn't receive? Have you ever thanked God for the healing that didn't come? All those times when you didn't get what you wanted, have you ever thought that they might be one of God's miracles happening in your life? That's why Paul wrote in Ephesians 5.20, Give thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we should give thanks for the answered prayers. But I think more importantly, we should give thanks for the unanswered prayers. Johnny Erickson Tata, I'm sure you're aware of her, at a young age had a very um, horrific diving accident, became a paraplegia, quadriplegia, excuse me. In her book, she wrote, when asked about this, she said, in other words, this wheelchair helps me to see that the good things in the, this life aren't the best things. There are better things yet to come. The good things in this life are only omens and foreshadowing of more glorious, grand, Great things to burst on the scene when we walk into the other side of eternity. The grace is his. The choice is yours. Would you let him reach down into an otherwise seems to be an awful pain in your life and wrench out of it positive good for yourself and glory for him? In other words, she's saying, church, the choice is ours. Are we willing to see the signs of God's miracles in our life? even when they don't seem to seem like miracles at all. But I think it's interesting. You know, this, this story kind of reminds me of another time of a group of people walking down the road and not everybody in the group saw Jesus. See, the donkey saw the angel of the Lord and stopped. You remember Paul walking on the road to Damascus was really the only one that saw Jesus. The other ones heard it, but he was the only one that saw Jesus. Only the donkey's eyes were open to see and recognize what was in front of him. Only Paul's eyes were open to recognize and see that Jesus was standing in front of him. And I think that sometimes we get so focused on what we expect in our lives, we forget to ask God, what does he want in our lives? Each time, Balaam refused to stop and ask his donkey, why are you doing this? Each time, Balaam refused to stop and see the miracle occurring right before his eyes. Do we see those things in our lives that don't go the way we want them as miracles? Or do we see them as frustrations? If we have faith in the Lord, and trust in his will. When things don't go as we plan, we still believe that. Paul wrote in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. See, so many times we read that to say, we know that all things work together for good for me. But that isn't what Paul wrote. All things ultimately will work together for good for God and not ourselves. Miracles might not always make sense to us, but church, we have to have faith and believe that all miracles always make sense to God. We expect miracles to be yes, you can. But remember, sometimes those miracles will be no, you can't. 
We expect miracles to be, you can have it now. But remember, sometimes they will be sorry, not this time. We even expect miracles to be, you are completely healed. The church, remember, sometimes the miracle will come when you hear your cancer has come back. The miracle might not always be for us, but we might be used by the Lord to give the miracle to someone else. Anytime we see the Lord working for us, thank you, Jesus, it's a miracle. But anytime we see the Lord working through us, Remember that that is even a greater miracle. You know, have you ever seen that commercial that, uh, I don't, he's not on, on TV anymore, but the Verizon guy, like, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Like, he was annoying, but we all remember the saying, right? Well, sometimes God will use miracles in our lives to ask us the same question. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? See, God doesn't use Verizon. God uses the Holy Spirit. And sometimes when we see those miracles happening in our lives that, quite honestly, we don't think are miracles. Quite honestly, we probably see them as a trial or, or a persecution or why is this happening to me? Just maybe, just maybe it's God saying, can you hear me now? Not because we can't, but because at that time, we just don't expect it. Continuing in verse 31, it says, Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And he bowed his head and fell flat, flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to stand against you. Because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned aside for me these three times. If she had not turned aside for me, surely I would have killed you by now and let her live. And Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know you stood in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it displeases you, I will turn back. Then the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I speak to you that you shall speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. Now, you know what I would have done, honestly, when my eyes actually opened up and I saw the angel of the Lord? You know, I know Balaam, like, got on the, the ground and, and, like, worshiped. You know what I would have done, honestly, first? I would have kissed the donkey. <laughs> like, thank you so much for saving me. But Balaam's eyes are finally open and he could finally understand what was going on. And when we're going through those times where we can't quite honestly say, boy, this seems like a miracle working in my life. We have to remember what was said in Isaiah 55, 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways, your ways my ways, says the Lord. And I would just add to that that sometimes God's miracles are not always the miracles we would want in our lives as well. But regardless of what you're going through in your life right now, you have to remember that God is always working. God always has a plan. And sometimes what's scary, that God will do whatever it takes to accomplish whatever he wants. God will take you to a place where you will hear him, even though you might not expect it. Band, if you guys want to come on up. I posted on our Facebook page this week and on Twitter a question. How far does God have to take you in order for you to find him? You remember for one man, a thief, God had to take him all the way to a cross so that he could meet Jesus. Those things in our life that we just don't think are good or great or even miraculous might be the things, the true miracles that God is using to bring us closer. We have to remember that some miracles come 
from unexpected places. Where will you be before you'll listen? Maybe divorced? Maybe diseased? Maybe despaired? Maybe at death's door? God will take you to a place in your life where you will be given a choice. But the question is, church, will you hear him? Yes, some miracles do come from unexpected places. But also remember, sometimes they come by unexpected people. Peter wrote in 2 Peter 2.16, but he was rebuked for his iniquity. A dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice restrained the madness of the prophet. It took a dumb donkey for Balaam's eyes to be opened to see the angel of the Lord standing in front of him. It took a dumb donkey Open Balaam's eyes so he could see God's miracles before him. Right now, church, with all that's going on in your life, are your eyes open to see the miracles that the Lord is performing all around you? God can use anybody, anything, any miracle he wants to get it through to us question is, are you ready to see God's hands in all things? The good, the exciting, the bad, the painful. What is God doing and using to get your attention? No, it probably won't be a talking donkey. It might not even be an injury or illness. Church know that he's trying. Maybe it's this sermon or a friend who's been talking to you. Or a problem that you've been dealing with that just doesn't seem to go away. Whatever it is, church, we all need to pay attention. What is it in your life, God, church? that God might want you to do? What is it in your life that God might want you to change? If he's asking you to change, the question is, are you willing? See, so many times we think God's just like the absolute killjoy. absolute best for you. We have to believe and expect that some of God's greatest miracles come from unexpected places. We saw it at Christmas time in a stable. Moses saw it in a burning bush. Jonah had to be eaten by a large fish to see a miracle. Paul had to be blinded. Balaam. Poor Balaam had to have his donkey talk. Church, we see miracles every day all around us. This might not be the miracles that we want. 1 John 5, 3 says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. See, even God's quote-unquote bad miracles are not burdensome for us. But if we love the Lord, even during those bad miracles, will stay faithful even when we can't figure him out. Church, right now, 
as you look at your life and as you look at your situations, what miracles are you overlooking in your life? More importantly, right now, why and how is God using those miracles? Get your attention. No, maybe the miracle isn't going to be congratulations, you won the lottery. No, maybe the miracle is not going to be congratulations, you got that new job. No. Maybe the miracle is not going to be you're healed. But even when we hear, I'm sorry, there's nothing else we can do. We have to trust that God's still working. Maybe after struggles and trials and years of trying, that relationship you tried to hold on to just isn't going to work. We have to trust that God is doing something greater. No, church, the question isn't, does God still do miracles? The question for us is, can we see his miracles? Justice flows like the 
because you are forsaken. I'm accepted. You are content. And I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again.
Jesus, you are my King. Sing that again, Jesus. Jesus, you are my King. Jesus, you are my King. One more time. Jesus, you are my King. Jesus, you. Childlike faith, that burning desire to love you more, to know you more, to follow you more. Lord, I pray that this week we would see you work in our lives. Miraculous ways. And Lord, I pray this week that we would see you work through us in miraculous ways. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us. I'll be up front to pray for you guys. Please hang around for some fellowship time. We have some tables in the back we're going to bring out. But, but the key to being in church and the key to being strong in your faith is fellowship, amen, and surrounding yourself with good, godly Christian people. So thank you guys. God bless you guys. Go out and enjoy this very cool day. If you need a jacket, we have jackets in the back. Just kidding. Thank you, Jesus, for Alaska. We hope that you've enjoyed today's podcast. Journey of Faith is a four-square Christian church located in Glendora, California. For more information on Journey of Faith, visit us on the internet at www.thejourneyoffaith.net. That's www.thejourneyoffaith.net. You may also call us at 626 626- 914-3400. And finally, we hope you will come visit us. Our Sunday morning service is at 10 a.m. We offer ministries for all ages, from newborns through high school during our service. May God bless you. Thank you for joining the journey.